so from basics to the cutting edge and uh, the first question would be the timing of echo so how early do you think we should uh, echo cardiography be done in shock and uh, immediately or at admission or after initial resuscitation uh, <clears throat> definitely immediately how early but also has to be repeated uh, the power of echo is not just a single point the power of echo is serial assessment like uh, m many things we do in ICU but certainly the timing is as early as possible and then serial assessment so some say stabilize first other says echo should be the step one what's your approach in that i mean so for a busy resuscitation bay should we be focusing on the echo first and the comprehensive echo later i mean do you agree or disagree with this i do echo first absolutely if you have the machine because it takes seconds and it transforms the way you see the patient because without echo i think you often shoot in the dark without objectively understanding what's going on in the patient hemodynamics so if you have the machine uh, at the bedside and if you can do it you have to do it as early as possible because it enhances your bedside physical examination and uh, it, it, the data are clear we have data that showed that ultrasound enhanced physical examination is better than physical examination alone thank you so uh then again, the, in a crashing patient with an undifferentiated shock, where I'm not sure what kind of shock is it. So, what's the very first echocardiographic uh, question you try to answer at the bedside? Yes. So, <clears throat> first, uh, echocardiographic. We are talking specifically on echocardiography. I always think um, in, in terms of perfusion. So, the most life-threatening element in shock is not congestion; it is perfusion. That's why the first parameter, if I have one second in a patient with shock, I look, look at the LVO-TVTI because it is the parameter which informs me very quickly uh, 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 on the patient's perfusion status. But obviously you have to do uh, a lot of other parameters. So first, look at the heart, gross visual assessment. Is it small? Is it big? Because if it's big, this indicates chronicity if it's small indicates acute onset and then look at the difference between the right and left heart is the rv dilated is it bigger than the left is the apex entirely made by the rv because these are all clues to rv problem whether it's acute or chronic and then look at the vti i think if i have few seconds i will just start with the vti while quickly looking at the lv size rv size the relationship between both the position of the septum and obviously in the interim you have to rule out pericardial effusion and tamponade um, uh, and this can immediately give you clues on the uh, one of the very important reversible causes of shock uh, because echo is not uh, meant to diagnose shock we should always remember that shock diagnosis is a clinical diagnosis but the power of echo is in identifying the cause of shock and reducing the number of differential diagnosis so you can address it and manage it quickly uh, at the bedside. So it's, it's like uh, we need to look is it tempo not empty LV or RV failure and what flashes uh, first will help us and so which uh, single view do you want to go first with subcostal or apical and why? Well again it depends on the context so if we're talking about cardiac arrest the, the most important view is the subcostal view because it is also the view that uh, interferes less with resuscitation and we advocate and we teach uh, our fellows and colleagues to use it in resuscitation without interfering uh, chest compression um, but if you have time if it's not a cardiac arrest situation uh, a single view is the view which gives you the vti in shock which is the apical four chamber apical five chamber view because this is a, a nice view which immediately also shows you the relationship between the rv and the lv the size uh, look at the pericardial effusion uh, and you have a nice alignment with the lvot uh, so this is a very uh, useful view which requires some experience for people beginning their journey in learning echocardiography because you, you should also try to get the optimum view which is important uh, dr barat it is not just about getting any view, any view which can be a challenge in icu patients you have to have uh, some learning to try to improve the views because you are measuring a parameter by doppler which is vti 
And in Doppler, there's something called the Doppler equate, the Doppler angle. If you have mal aligned view, you can easily cause error in measuring the LVTVTI. So I always recommend colleagues not to jump into measuring if they have minimal or no experience in obtaining views. The most important is learning how to align and get the best view and then do the measurement afterwards.